Member Statements. The member for London West. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, COVID-19 has exposed long-standing systemic problems in Ontario's long-term care homes, including the deep reliance on family caregivers to meet residents' needs. The visitation restrictions have been incredibly difficult for anxious family members and often detrimental to the health of their loved ones. The lifting of the restrictions, however, has raised other concerns among London West constituents. Anne Bigelow wrote that the requirement for a clean COVID test in the last two weeks is just ridiculous. If I have no symptoms, the test won't say I have the virus, and I could just pick it up the next day. Tammy Goddard told me her parents were effectively imprisoned since mid-March in their room in a retirement home, but we can now take them out, bring them back within 12 hours, and who knows where we may take them or if I or anyone that sees them wears their mask. Long-term care home resident Nancy, who hasn't seen her family since March 7th, said, I feel that being 80 88 years old does not give me too much longer to enjoy my family. I'm afraid they will hold off on in-home visits until all the homes are out of quarantine, which seems very unfair. In this weather, I can't go outside because of a bad heart. Speaker, family caregivers deserve visitation guidelines that keep their loved ones safe, but that also recognize the essential contribution caregivers make to resident health and well-being. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Scarborough, Rouge Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Throughout these unprecedented times, our government has stepped up and shown that it will always fight for and protect the people of Ontario. Small businesses have been hit the hardest by the economic impacts of COVID-19. This is especially true in my riding of Scarborough, Rouge Park. I recently had the pleasure of hosting a virtual roundtable with small business owners in Scarborough Rouge Park alongside Minister of Finance Rod Phillips and a surprise appearance from Premier Ford. We discussed the challenges small businesses are facing and what our government plans to do to help them. I also had the opportunity to visit small businesses in Scarborough Rouge Park. Our local business owners such as Rosa's Pasta, Highland Creek Med Spa, Amigos, Fratelli Village Pizzeria, Riveras Barbershop, and many others are working hard to implement and follow necessary precautions to reopen safely. I want to thank the residents of Scarborough Rouge Park in our, in, for supporting the local businesses in our riding during this difficult time. Shop local, shop safe, shop confident. Thank you. Member for Brampton Centre. Good morning. Thank you, Speaker. It's an honour to rise here today. Um, Speaker, on July 6, um, mayors and chairs from Ontario, uh, from across Ontario, represented by the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, the mayors and regional chairs of Ontario, and the Large Urban Mayors Caucus of Ontario, met to discuss the COVID-19 financial emergency. Municipalities across this province have been hit hard by the pandemic. To protect municipal, municipal services, we need immediate provincial and federal support to cover lost revenue and the additional costs caused by COVID-19. This call for action by Ontario municipalities is part of a national effort led by the Federation of Canadian Municipalities to secure at least $10 billion in emergency relief for Canadian municipalities to be funded speaker, by the federal and provincial governments. But yet, we have to hear from the federal government and the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing on whether he's going to deliver on this commitment. Speaker, time for a commitment is running out. Now, halfway through the budget year, municipalities have no choice but to consider plans to budget the balance, uh, budget, uh, balance their budget sorry, by raising property taxes, user fees and charges or cutting services. Difficult conversations about cost savings um, and reductions are taking place at council meetings across this province. Supports to children's family and supports, um, reducing or cancelling transit services, staffing adjustments, these are all cuts that are on the table, Speaker. This province needs to step up. When will this minister commit to providing the funding that municipalities are in dire need of? Thank you. The member for Mississauga Malton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, some moments leave a deep mark in our life. On Saturday, the night of June 20th, I got a call from Mr. Imtiaj of Malton Masjid regarding 62 years old Mr. Ijaz Chaudhry, who tragically died in a police-involved incident. 
We all can agree that any death in our community is a tragedy. These incidents have shaken the families and my community, and it is clear that more needs to be done. Peel Police with CMHA has mobile crisis resp rapid response team. These teams respond to the emergency calls where mental health concerns are identified and assist individuals in distress. A crisis worker with a special trained police officer provide on an on-site assessment to individuals experiencing a mental health crisis. I can call on the Peel Police Service Board for working collaboratively with the government to expand these type of proven successful programs that will support these, those experiencing a mental health crisis, including the mobile crisis rapid response teams in Peel region. I want to convey my heartfelt thanks to Malton Masjid for financially supporting the family, Jama Masjid for donating $10,000, and to the whole community for coming together and donating over $128,000 through GoFundMe to support the family. These recent tragedies remind us that more work needs to be done, and there is an urgent need for a constructive dialogue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The next statement, the member for Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, it is a real pleasure to rise to pay tribute to the people, community organizations, and small businesses in my riding of Davenport who have gone above and beyond to help us get through the COVID-19 pandemic. We have had competing mutual aid groups and care pods spring up to organize help street by street. Davenport Mutual Aid, Davenport Helps, and the cluster at West Neighborhood House have been connecting people with food supports, PPE, and running errands, an incredible model that I know will be with us long after the virus. Sistering shifted location and their entire model to serve a population in desperate need, and local businesses have stepped up too. Nozotalio on Bloor, Bloor West has provided free groceries to seniors in isolation. Sugo in Bloordale delivered food to families in crisis. Itacate Mexican restaurant on St. Clair and Oakwood served hundreds of free meals free of charge to frontline workers and those who had lost their jobs. And when Casa dos Azores heard about six families in need through Working Women Community Center, they quickly organized a food drive to help them out. Abrigo Center had extra gloves. They donated them to the folks at Oasis Community Center. Speaker, these are just a few of the many inspiring stories of compassion and solidarity that have helped us get through this difficult time. I am so proud of my community. To all of Davenport's pandemic heroes, from the frontline health care and essential workers to the neighbors who banged a pot or lent a hand. Thank you. Thank you. The next statement, the member for Glengarry, Prescott Russell. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. At Glengarry, Prescott Russell, we always have things to celebrate, and the pandemic is not going to change this. On July 1st, 100 23 Canadians received medals from our general governor. And I'm very proud to say that many of my uh, many of my of my writers are on the list. The captain Jack Gagne received a medal uh, for his volunteering job and for his help for military families. Eve Burchon received the medal for uh, merit for his work with uh, International Optimist. Jonathan Pitch Denver received the cross for merit service, and his mother also received a medal. I'm very proud of them. Our community are well known as the best places to live in Canada, and it's thanks to our people, people like Jack, Eve, Jonathan, and Tina. They say you die twice, the first time physically and the second time when your name is no longer remembered. I want Tina to know that Jonathan Pitre will never be forgotten. Thank you, Tina, for giving us this precious gift that has touched us all in a very special way, our butterfly child. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much. The next statement, the member for Whitby. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Over the next 12 years, Whitby is set to be one of the fastest growing municipalities in Durham Region. And as a result, we need to ensure that supports are in place for everyone in the community to thrive. With the planned expansion, Speaker, of the Oshawa Clinic Group to Whitby in 2024, Whitby residents will have better access to the right care 
at the right time and in the right place. This new facility, Speaker, will be a one-stop convenience for the majority of non-acute health care needs and open 364 days of the year. As the Member of Provincial Parliament for Whitby, I'm proud that this clinic is the largest group practice in Canada. It will connect both specialists and family physicians. Speaker, I'd like to thank uh, Transportation Minister Carolyn Maroney and Associate Minister Kinga Surma for the GTA for helping to release the land for the clinic. Thank you, Minister. And, uh, and Minister Elliott for her leadership on the Connecting People to Home and Community Care Act and the difference it will make in the lives of patients and families in the town of Whitby. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member for Toronto, Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, there's huge anxiety and growing anger amongst Ontario's parents, particularly women, that school and childcare will not be there for them and their children come this fall. Through the height of the pandemic, I was calling into my riding. I would talk to families where either both parents were essential workers, both were working at home, or a mixture. They were looking after their children at home, and they were stressed to the max. Speaker, on top of all of those stresses, they didn't know if childcare or school would be there for them and their families when they were called back to work. And right now, it looks like it's not there. Childcare centres can't figure out how to make the finances work if they have to have fewer children in the centre for health reasons. Less than two months to go before schools reopen, we don't have a solid plan. And one of the substantial options on the table is a hybrid where children go to school half the time. Without childcare, without full-time schooling, parents can't return to work. And speaker, what that will mean most of the time is that women will not be returning to work. And that's a disaster for them personally and for this society. We're not in the 1950s. Women are not expendable. Right. Fund childcare so that they are viable. Take the necessary steps in staffing and space to make sure that students can go back to school full time. Don't abandon parents. Thank you. Thank you. The member for Barry Innisfil. Thank you. It is my privilege to serve the people of Barry Innisfil in this legislature, and I'm really proud to serve. This year marks the 200th anniversary of the town of Innisfil. Yes, Mr. Speaker, the town of Innisfil is older than the Dominion of Canada. In 1820, the first European settlers to Innisfil were the Houston family who came by way of the Holland River and beautiful Lake Simcoe to settle in what is now Big Bay Point, the famous location of Davidson's restaurant. And I know our Deputy Mayor, Dan Davidson, really wishes he could celebrate uh, this coming year. Soon after that, though, Mr. Speaker, John and George George Warnica and John Clayton led uh, the, through their work led to the creation of not only Highway uh, 11 but also what is now known as Young Street. Their pioneering spirit demonstrated that uh, the you know awing uh, accomplishments. And while the land that they settled was not uh, was fertile, these families did not uh, have to overcome. They had to overcome many unforgiving challenges to survive day to day. When I think of everything these settlers lived through and the everyday conveniences which we enjoyed today, they lived without. I am inspired by the tenacity and, and, and their uh, able to overcome challenges. On this day, we celebrate the 100th birthday of Innisfil. So for me, to the, all of the Innisfil residents, have a happy birthday. Remember our great history, those that came before us, and of course, the pres presence of our Indigenous peoples in Innisfil. Happy birthday, Innisfil. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Cambridge. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and good morning. Mr. Speaker, our government recently gave business owners and workers another tool to increase their confidence so that they can get back to work safely. And like I said during the many consultations I held in my riding of Cambridge, employers and workers know their workplaces best. I also heard that a guidance document would be helpful in preparation for reopening, which is why we introduced the first ever Ontario General Workplace Guidance Document. This guide will help employers protect their employees and others from the spread of COVID-19 in the workplace. The guide comes with a template that they can fill in to develop a unique COVID-19 safety plan that caters to the needs of their workplace. Our materials help them identify risks, determine a safety plan, and communicate the actions being taken to others in the workplace. 
In addition to our workplace safety guide, we have released over 130 sector-specific guidance documents to help support employers and workers. Mr. Speaker, the health and safety of workers and others is our highest priority. Our government is committed to protecting the people of Ontario and supporting businesses during these unprecedented times. Our workplace safety guide will help Ontario move forward from this crisis and safely reopen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. That concludes our member statements for this morning.